Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Um, if anybody is joining the live or hops on, just let me know where you're watching from. You can just pop it in the comments. Um, hello. Yes, I was just saying anybody that hops on live. Sorry about that light in front of my face. Anyone that hops on live, uh, just let me know where you're watching from. Um, so today, I am going to be talking about um, a misconception that people have about improving their relationship. Um, this is a misconception that keeps people stuck. Um, and I'm going to share with you today what that is and how you can change that and what it looks like. So again, um, uh, if you're watching, let me know where you're watching from. Just share in the comments. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I am Denise Fitzpatrick. I am a former therapist of 17 years, and I'm now a marriage and relationship coach. And I really help people that are struggling in their relationships, and this can be relationships of any kind. Um, primarily, I've been working with married couples, but I also work with women individually. And so if you're feeling disconnected or unhappy in your relationship, what I do is I help people reclaim their power by strengthening the relationship they have with themselves. Um, and so that really directly leads into what I want to talk about today. And again, that is this misconception. And the misconception is it takes two. Okay, people believe that it takes two to change or improve their relationship, whether that's a marriage or that's a relationship with their children. Um, a significant other, uh, the misconception is that it takes two, okay? And so then we just want to, um, I just want to share with you how um, that does not serve anybody at all, and it actually keeps you stuck struggling in your relationship when you believe that it's going to take both people. Okay, again, if you're just joining, I'm Denise Fitzpatrick. I'm a former therapist of 17 years. I'm now a marriage and relationship coach, and I help people who are struggling in their relationships, um, who are just feeling disconnected and lonely, and I help them reclaim their power uh, by improving their relationship with themselves. Because when we improve our relationship with ourselves, when we have a solid relationship with ourselves and we love ourselves, then all other relationships in our life are going to be better. It's just, it's true. Um, so let me go back to the misconception. I just want to share, it does not take two. It doesn't take two people to change your relationship. Again, whether that's married, not married, relationship with your children, relationship with your mother-in-law, relationship with your boss, whatever it is, it does not take two. It only takes one. It only takes one person, okay? And how do I know that? I know that based on two things. Uh, well, there's probably a lot of other things, but these two things I'm going to share with you. Number one is I did it myself. I changed my marriage by changing the relationship I have with me, right? So I've been married for 20 years and actually, oh my God, I'm sorry, it's 21 years. <laughs> we just had our anniversary at the beginning of December. Uh, it's 21 years. I was, I've been so used to saying 20 years that um, I forgot it's 21 years. Anyway, I've been married for 21 years and for many of those years, I would say at least 10 of those years, I was living in reaction to my husband. I was living, uh, I was trying to change him, control him, have him be um, a certain way so that I could feel differently, so I could feel loved, so I could feel attractive, so I could feel desired. Like I needed him to show up in a certain way. Um, and what was our relationship like? It wasn't good. Because it was me always nagging him and criticizing him and trying to control him and trying him to get him to be somebody uh, he wasn't. And so that's what that was the energy between us. It was me sort of nagging, criticizing, pursuing, controlling, and him just kind of 
being like, okay, I don't know what you want from me. Or maybe he'd make changes for a couple of uh, days or maybe even a week. But he was doing that just to kind of get me off his back, right? He, he was feeling criticized, feeling misunderstood. And here I was thinking he was the bad guy, right? So there was not a lot of joy between us. There was a lot of me feeling angry, angry and resentful. He would say something, I would get reactive, and then I would go into my whole long list of, in story about all the ways that he was imperfect, not meeting my needs, not measuring up. Um, and so I spent a lot of years in that place feeling really unhappy, really miserable, really like, is this what this is all about? Is this really what marriage is all about? Um, and... It wasn't until years later, I mean, like 10 years later, 11 years later, 12 years later, that I finally started to open my mind to a different way, to actually taking control of creating a different experience for myself, right? In my, in my training of, of working with couples and just doing my own personal development work, I realized that me trying to control him and change him was a dead end. That was the reason that I was suffering, not because of him, but because I thought he should be different than he was, right? So the more I sort of pushed and pushed and pushed for him to be different, the worse I felt because the truth was I have no control over how he showed up. Right. And I was missing out on so many of his positive qualities and the good stuff between us by simply focusing on me needing him to be different. OK, but when I finally took a step back and I started to work on the relationship I have with myself, when I stopped living in reaction to him, when I stopped personalizing everything that he was doing, when I stopped making his actions or lack of actions mean that he didn't care or that he didn't love me, when I stopped all of that stuff, everything improved. I felt better about myself. I felt better about him. I felt better about our marriage because when I, when I started to strengthen that relationship with me and truly love me first, then I couldn't help but show up differently in my marriage. And that was the place where I felt much more empowered and much more in control um, and much more confident and self-assured because I wasn't depending on him for that, right? Because when we depend on other people and all these things outside of ourselves to feel good, then we're, we're going to need to or try to control all those things. But when we let other people just be who they are and we can give to ourselves in that loving, supportive way, and when we feel better about us, then naturally, like, the energy is just going to feel better. Like, I'm going to feel better about him. He's going to feel better about me, right? I just felt so much more empowered when I stopped depending on him to be different, right? And so what did I do? Well, number one, I started loving myself more. I stopped beating myself up and stopped thinking that there was something wrong with me because he wasn't giving to me in the way that I, I needed or wanted. I stopped making it mean something about me, that I wasn't worthy, that I wasn't lovable because none of that was true from the beginning. I was worthy and lovable and um, attractive and sexy and desirable. I was all of those things, whether he was telling me that or not. I just needed to believe it for myself. So that's what I did. I started to believe in myself. I started to believe in the value and worth that I have in, regardless of my circumstances outside of me. And that's true for all of us. We are valuable, we are worthy, we are lovable. We are all of those things, no matter what our partner does or doesn't do. 
right? So I was really learning how to love myself first. That was one of the things that was standing in the way. I was wanting all of that love and value and worth to come from somebody else, to give that to me, to fill that up in me, right? But that's, it's not how that, it's not how it works because I continued to feel unhappy until I started to do that for me, right? And then again, when I started to do that for me and I felt more confident and in control of my life, then I showed up differently to the relationship. And when I show up differently, he shows up differently, right? He's not feeling criticized and nagged all the time. He sees me feeling better in general. So he's feeling better. And then our interactions with each other are better. I'm less reactive. I'm personalizing things less, right? And so we have so much more enjoyment. And then I was able to see that he was giving in so many ways that I wasn't even recognizing because I was so focused on the ways that he wasn't, right? And I think so many of us do this in relationship. And I know in the couples that I work with, this is, this is a big, like a place where they really get hung up is because they're, they have a lens where they're seeing everything negative. And they're focused on so many of the things that aren't going well, right? And so what our brains do is we actually collect evidence to support that, to support this negative view, this negative perspective we have of the other or our relationship, right? And so that's the place that that I was. And again, the place where a lot of the couples I work with are in the same place where they're seeing things through a very negative lens collecting evidence to support that and then filtering out anything positive, right? Does this, is this resonating with people? Can anybody relate to um, this idea of really having a negative filter in their relationship, maybe how they view their partner, how they view their marriage, and even how we view ourselves? You know, um, like I was saying before, when we're not kind of when we're not getting what we need or we think we need and what we want, um, we might start to have this internal dialogue that's negative about ourselves, right? And so then we start to to view ourselves in a negative light, right? And then we collect the evidence of why we're not lovable, why we're not worthy, because if I was, then he would love me differently, right? So that negative lens can be. Um, not just about him, but about yourself. And so you want to not only work on that story you have about him and your marriage, but you also want to be aware of like, what are the stories I have about me? What negative thoughts, narrative story about myself is holding me back? Is it something like, I'm not worthy, I'm not lovable, I'm not sexy, I'm not attractive because of what my partner thinks or says or does, right? So you really want to be like checking in with your, your thoughts, not just about the, about your partner, about yourself, right? Because like I said, this is really about strengthening your relationship with yourself. Um, and so kind of full circle back to where I started, um, with my own story is that, Changing that narrative, changing that negative view, um, look, having a different perspective. Once I was able to to feel better about me, um, having that different perspective changed everything, right? And so even now, there are times when um, my my brain goes to negativity. Of course, we're human; it's the human experience. But I also have um, the experience of all sorts of other more positive things that that easily, um, I don't want to say compensate, but like if I'm in a negative place, I also know that I there's all this really good stuff that I might only stay there for a short time. Whereas before I may have stayed there for days, weeks, years, maybe. Yes, years. Um, whereas now, like I have some negative thoughts and they easily pass. 
and I'm back to feeling loving and kind um, because I have so much more love and compassion and kindness for myself, right? Because when we're putting out negativity or judgment or criticism, we're feeling it in here too, right? We're, we're telling ourselves that. We're not feeling enough. So we really need to get, get right with us in order to um, be right in our other relationships. Because this right here is the most important relationship. And that's something I didn't realize early on in my marriage. Um, and I'm so glad I, I, I know that now because uh, the quality of all of my relationships are better. And yours can be too. When you get that relationship with yourself right and you love yourself that way, all your relationships will be different. I guarantee it. Um, Okay, so I know I got a little bit off track there, but what I said was I started by saying that um, it only takes one person to change the relationship. And how do I know that? And number one was because I did it myself. And then I just shared that story with you about um, my own marriage and how I've come to a better place and how my marriage is so much better because I'm better with me. Okay, and here's the other, the other piece of this. The other reason I know that it only takes one is because the work that I do uh, as a marriage and relationship coach, although um, a, a large percentage of it is done with couples, here's where, where, where the um, misconception comes in. So they think it takes two, but even when couples come to see me, I am, I am actually doing individual work with each person in the presence of the other okay so let me say that again even when I'm working with a couple I'm doing individual work with each person in the presence of the other okay so what do I mean by that well most and this is and this is part of the reason um, why couples are um, what's the word I want to say, um, not successful at changing these patterns on their own. And it's also why um, a lot of traditional therapy misses the mark on this. Because, well, number one, for, for couples, they're focused on each other. They're wanting the other person to change. They're not doing the individual work, right? So if you're only focused on the other, and trying to get the other person to change. We know that doesn't work. We know that that's not successful long-term. Um, so naturally, um, you're gonna keep repeating those same cycles. And then, like I said, traditional therapy kind of misses the mark because they generally try and help people um, sort of negotiate their issues or, or solve their problems, but they don't really um, get to doing the individual work. So here's how my work is different. When I'm working with a couple, I'm, I first have to tease out what part belongs to each person. So if they've developed this pattern over years, maybe decades, um, it's all intertwined, you know, whose stuff is whose. So I have to help sort out who owns what piece of the pattern, what piece of the cycle. And then once I do that, I help each person identify what their individual growth is going to be. You know, most people, when they come to see me, they don't understand that that's what they're actually doing. They're actually doing their own work. They just happen to be doing it in the presence of the other person, which is, is both good and bad, right? Because sometimes it can get kind of heated in the session if, you know, your partner perceives you differently than you perceive yourself. But nonetheless, this is what leads to true change and growth in your relationship is each person doing their own work. That work of going back to my original story, that work of loving yourself first, getting that relationship with you right, and then your other relationships will fall into place. 
So it doesn't take two, it takes one. I know because I do this work with couples and even if only one of the couple were there, they would still be doing that same individual work, right? This is where um, people miss that this is really individual work, right? Because if we're always depending on people and things and circumstances and situations outside ourselves to make us feel a certain way or to think about ourselves a certain way, right? We're always going to need to control those things outside of us. We have to have it start with us. We have to, right? Because here's the thing. When you do this individual work, when you start to, to have a better relationship with yourself and speak more kindly to yourself and love yourself, you are so much more empowered in your relationship. You're not living at the effect of your partner or other people, right? Like think about a moment when you get triggered and you just react, right? Because you, you felt like whatever they did or said was a reflection of you or you personalize it and make it mean something about you. And then that just adds to this negative internal dialogue you have about yourself. But when you're able to separate yourself from that and realize that your worth and um, value is not dependent on anyone outside of you, right? That's so freeing. So that when, when you do get triggered, you can remind yourself that, okay, I don't have to make that mean anything about me. Let me be curious about what my partner means by this. And managing those triggers is some of the hardest work that you will do. It's actually, um, I was working with a client the other day and I was sharing with him how, oh, in these moments, you know when you get triggered and then you kind of lash out at your partner or you do whatever it is you do, blame, criticize. Uh, I said, that's the moment. The triggers are our moment to reflect inward instead of outward. That's the moment where you wanna pause and not do the same thing that you always do. And he said to me, oh, well, that seems really hard. And I was like, well, yeah, it is really hard. That's why it's called work, right? But when you stop having those reactions um, every time you feel triggered, right? Usually we want the other person to do something different so we don't have to feel triggered. But that's like impossible because then we, again, we would need to control all the people, all the circumstances, all the things so that nobody ever triggers us so we don't react, right? That, we can't do that, right? We'd be spending our life trying to control other people and other things outside of us. So what we can do is take control of how we do react, how we respond, what we do with our triggers. And again, that's some of the hardest work people will do, but when you can do it, when you can master that, when you can know how to manage your reactions to people, to situations, to circumstances, that is when you truly take your power back. And that, that when you're able to do that, then you don't live in reaction to everything around you. And that truly is the most freeing thing you can do for yourself. And it sounds, well, maybe it doesn't sound simple. I think some people think it sounds simple, but that, it's, it's not easy. But it can be done. I mean, I will tell you that when Earlier in my marriage, when I used to react to my husband in that way, criticize, nag, yell, whatever it was, I thought that would be impossible to change. But I, I changed it. I changed it for myself, and so can you, right? So let me bring it right back to the beginning, which was the misconception being it takes two. It doesn't. It only takes one. And, the, and that one could be you. And it could be you doing something amazing for yourself. So it's not just for your marriage or your relationship. 
think of it as doing something good for you because you're doing the individual work for yourself and the byproduct of that is a better marriage, uh, better friendships, um, better relationships with coworkers, with bosses, with your mother, with your mother-in-law, right? Like this work truly transforms when you transform you from the inside out, then you transform everything in your life. That's so try not to think about it as like, oh, why should I have to be the one to do the work? Think of it more as like you're giving yourself a gift by doing the work. Because if number one, you're changing the relationship you have with you, the most important relationship. And the byproduct of that is having better relationships with everybody and everything in your life. Um, so just to wrap up, I just want to share too that I have a group for women. Um, I've just recently changed the name of it. It was very much focused on um, marriage, which is still focused on marriage, but I've changed it from my marriage works, a community for women to empowering women in relationships because that's always been um, the message that I want for, for women to understand. Uh, and this, the name of the group now just makes that so much clearer. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, if you are interested in improving the relationship with yourself as a way to improve all the other relationships in your life, then you may want to join the group, Empowering Women in Relationships. I will drop the link uh, in the comments. And also, I do this work one-on-one, -on -one, individually, as well as with couples. So if this is something that you've been thinking about and you're wanting to do this work, then reach out and we can have um, a breakthrough call. And on that call, I help people identify the place that they're stuck, what's holding them back, and help them think about what kind of relationship do you want to be in? What would you want this to look like? If this was no longer a problem, what would your marriage look like? And then I help you create a plan to get you to where you want to be. From here we are, here's where we want to be. What happens in between? That's the work that we do. So I will also drop a link in the comments to book a call with me if that's something you're um, thinking about for yourself. And that can just be to kind of explore the possibility of working together um, or learning more about what that would look like. So I hope this was helpful and have a wonderful weekend.